I've been outlining a novel in Obsidian for the past few months. I created an initial video showing you my kickoff session, but I wanted to give you an update on how it's going and how I'm staying sane throughout the process. So a few cool tricks that I've learned. The first one is directly within Obsidian, is creating useful annotations as you're drafting your novel. The goal here is to come up with Microsoft Word style pop-out comments. So in Microsoft Word, you can highlight text, add a little pop-out, write a note about the text and it kind of pops in, pops out whenever you need it. In Obsidian, this isn't really possible. You can add links, outgoing links to other notes, keep a notes file and keep all your notes there, but it's not as seamless. So through the use of a little bit of tricky workplace management and a couple of community plugins, I've created something that works for me. So let me run you through it. So the first things first, I have a chapter uh, note here. So this is Finding Daddy, this is one of my chapters. As you'll remember from my last video, I have a little info section here with some metadata um, properties about the characters, the setting, uh, and then I also have a note section here on basically the notes note uh, that accompanies this chapter. And what you'll see here is the uh, chapter takes up the majority of my screen, it's what I focus on, but I also have a little notes uh, page on the side here that I, I can either have open uh, or have closed and it still works just as fine. I'll show you that. So first things first, um, you'll notice as I hover over a, um, an outgoing link here, my pop-up is different from what you might notice. Um, it's, this is the hover uh, preview plugin, I think it's called. Let me just check uh, my notes here. Actually, let me just go in here to my community plugin and show you. Hover, hover editor is the name of this um, community plugin. So the way I have it set is as I hover over one of my outgoing links, I automatically get the pop-up and it links to a block reference, which is essentially an annotation of this line. So Happy's family was breaking up on the last day of summer break. That's my pros. If I go over the hover plugin um, and go to, that, uh, go to that link, it takes me to this, which is I'm trying to write the best opening line. So a little example for you. Um, and in here, this is auto, um, auto editable. I'm trying to write the opening line, but it's hard. So I can go in here and edit that note um, and then come back to it. Um, and also here I've got other notes that link to other parts of the pros further down. So this is hover editor and you can set it up to have it auto pop up when you hover over um, uh, a outgoing link. And you can also have it automatically be in edit mode in the, in the uh, adjacent note. I find that having a note per chapter is good. You can also just have a master notes file that you link to, but with a, if you're writing a novel, it's gonna be a huge link. Uh, and it's not gonna be easy to uh, you know, just scroll up and down and find things that are relevant. So that's um, one plugin, but now you might be wondering, how do I add notes? Like how do I add annotations to a line? So let's try that here. So this is the line I wanna add an annotation to. Uh, this place can't fit any more boxes, Happy said. So I can go into my notes tab here and be like, um, Happy's house is in disarray. I want to remember that, but I don't want that to be part of the pros. Um, so let's say I know where I want to put the note. So what I'll do is I'll just highlight it. Um, and here I go to my command pane to another uh, community plugin called carry forward. And what carry forward allows me to, to do is make seamless block references um, to my main note from, from the other note. So the command I'm gonna pick here is actually copy link to line, but I actually have that mapped to command shift C. So instead of command C, which is generic copy, it's just a special command shift C. And what you'll notice here is it added a block reference. Um, my Grammarly is kind of getting in the way here. So let me just try out a block reference of this one, which is a little, uh, actually, you know what? Let's just open this up to the side a little. That'll help here. Boom, okay, that'll work better. So same one I wanted, Command Shift C, boom, adds a block reference. And this is the, the line in my pros that I want this to be attached to, Command V, there you go. And it pops up as an X in brackets straight to that annotation I wanted to add. The reason I added the brackets is because if you don't have the brackets, this is what it actually, this is, what it actually is. This is the, um, the actual syntax of the link. But if you don't have brackets, as you're like, you know, uh, you know, have your cursor going up and down the page, you're not a lot more likely to just have it expand that huge link reference that I'm tactically hiding with the X. So the brackets just make it a little cleaner as you navigate. And you can customize that, I'll show you in a second. 
But um, so this is what the actual link is. So finding daddy notes, which is the, 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 uh, the notes tab um, with a hashtag and a upward carrot and then the block ID. And then I have this as an alias. So I put in the, um, the standing carrot, I think that thing is called. And then I have an X uh, right after it. So all you see here is a little X in brackets. And I know that this is an annotation. And this is all automatic in the carry forward plugin. So if we go into the carry forward settings, default link text, you can set it to X, to asterisk, to note, whatever you want it to be. Uh, and then how do you want copied references to show up? I want them to show up as the link, which is here, essentially X, um, in the markdown syntax for a link, but then outside of that, um, I want it to have brackets. I can also put like C here. So if I do C, and let me just uh, redo this block reference here to show you how this works. Let's type old one. Let's highlight it again, Command Shift C, and then if I paste it in here, you get CX instead. So very, very nice way to do it. Um, I find this really helps, especially if you're in um, you know, annotation mode of your text, rather than highlighting Happy's name and putting a markdown in there. Um, I find that unwieldy because I'm going to mention happy 5 million times in this book and I don't want to highlight, do I highlight the first mention in each chapter? Do I highlight the third, like all the whole page? You know, it's, it's, uh, it really doesn't make a lot of sense here. So I find this is great. And also I like this better than footnotes because if you use footnotes instead, I think of footnotes as something that's going to migrate with your manuscript. So I would put a footnote into a manuscript if I wanted to end up in the final published text. These notes here are more like notes to me. I can turn some of these into footnotes in the long run if I think the audience will benefit. But for now, I just want them as notes to myself. And the final thing I'll show you here, the beauty is if you want to be in focus mode and you're not really into this annotating mode, close, close out your notes note. And then you can um, create new pop-ups and edit your old notes right from the manuscript. So here I am. Um, like I showed you here, if I hover over, I can edit this note, but instead of having that other note open, as long as I have one link to that notes, um, page in this manuscript, I don't need to have that thing perpetually open and distracted my eyesight. So let's say I wanted to add a note to this one that's full of pants put in the other room. Okay. It's a little tricky, but you could do it right from this view and not have to context switch all the way to your notes tab. So what you would do is, okay, this is the, okay, that's full of pants put in your room. I can open up another reference here. And literally just create another line and say, pants are wild, bruh. And then copy, command shift C, and I can just paste that here. And I'm annotated straight from this note, not having, even having that other note open. This is how I usually work after I have that first annotation put in. It's a lot easier. So that's that. There's three other valuable tips I want to give you guys today on novel writing in Obsidian and they involve novel writing outside of Obsidian. Obsidian isn't great for everything, and you don't want to just shoehorn stuff into Obsidian when it makes sense to, to think and work in other ways. First things first is a trick I've come up with called character cards. So let me expand this a little bit. These are the main characters in my novel. I've created little cue cards with their names, and some of them even have a, a little like cheat sheet note if I need to remind myself on what this character is all about. And these cards are going to be filled up with more and more metadata you can say about each character as I go on. Um, and I find these great to kind of thumb through, um, plop them on a table like this and come up with connections. You know, who's the antagonist? Who's the protagonist? Who are the sub characters? How do they interact with each other? Move them around the table. You could do this on a canvas, but it's a great way to limit your screen time while you're still thinking about your novel, more tactile. I really like it, I highly recommend it. And then when you're working on a scene, let's say the scene has these three characters in it. Um, I have a little thing on my desk that I can pop up standing notes. I'll just put these three characters up above my laptop screen. So I know who's in, who's, <laughs> who, who's in, the, um, who's in the chapter and I have a kind of a visual, visual reference there. I find this really helps just starting it out, but um, it's, it's great for me. Next thing is journaling. So sometimes instead of outlining a chapter in Obsidian, I will journal it out. And this is the format I find works. So one page per chapter, I'll put in the characters in that chapter, the main drive, like who is kind of the protagonist of that chapter is usually the main protagonist. Sometimes it's a little bit of a POV change. What are they trying to accomplish? That's kind of the heartbeat of the chapter. 
what has happened before, what has happened after, and then the beats. So what is the actual chapter going to do step by step? I find this is a great way to get off your computer, outline, come back to your computer, paste this in either via um, Apple Notes where it'll you know auto copy the text. My handwriting is garbage, so that would probably break my computer. I instead just manually transcribe things. And as I manu manually transcribe them from my journal to my computer, um, you improve on the writing, right? It's kind of like a first edit process. So I like that as well. And finally, we'll switch over to Excel. The way that I've been able to get the most volume of outlining done in the shortest amount of time is via a table. And let me show you the table I'm using. So I've got uh, a table here that has my chapter title, my scene title, my summary, the conflicts in, the, uh, in that chapter, and which subplots it ties into. Um, I could do this in Obsidian. I could build out a clunky table, um, bring in community plugins that add colors, that add filter abilities, but it's a lot of work, guys, when you can just have an Excel file open and do it all here and then transfer it into Obsidian for your draft. Don't make it like harder than it needs to be. You know, right click, insert, <laughs> insert column, you know, click the top row, add a filter, filter only for uh, for uh, chapters with the subplot of emits. Like, it's easy, it's built for you, right? Don't make your life harder than it needs to be. Uh, that's it for today. I'm going to keep doing these update videos as I work on my novel in and out of Obsidian. Let me know if you found this helpful. If you want to be along for the journey, hit subscribe. I love you all. Have a good day. Peace.